Welcome to table for 92. Element number 34, selenium. It's number 34 because it has exactly 34 protons within its nucleus. For selenium, we're cooking up my grandmother's famous zucchini nut bread. It's usually made with pecans, but Brazil nuts are extremely high in selenium, so we're using Brazil nuts. We'll pair this delicious bread with some slow eggs. This is nice, you know, I almost never make breakfast out here. I'm always making fancy steaks and seafood, so this is some real comfort food for me. Zucchini bread with slow scrambled scrambled eggs. Oh yeah. Selenium is a trace mineral, so we don't need a lot of it in our bodies, but it still performs some extremely important functions like helping to make DNA and protecting against infections. Brazil nuts though, by far, they have the highest concentration of selenium. Adults need something like 50 to 60 micrograms of selenium daily. Six Brazil nuts have like 550 micrograms of selenium, 10 times more than what we need. They're so high in selenium that if you eat a lot of Brazil nuts like weekly, you can develop selenium toxicity in your body. But yeah, selenium is found in tons of other foods, fish, beef, ham, brown rice, chicken, eggs, just tons more. Plus a lot of foods like cereal, they're fortified with all all the trace mineral the body needs, selenium included. You know, in the US, selenium is present in our soils that get transferred to the foods that grow. So selenium deficiency here is pretty rare. Other countries in the world, like China and Egypt, selenium is pretty low in soils. And selenium deficiency is fairly common. So selenium started to get added to fertilizers to get selenium transferred into the food supply. Selenium is also used in fertilizers because it can have several advantages to plant growth and food production. It seems to counteract certain physical problems that occur on plants from different stresses like drought, cold, high salinity, but it seems like we don't really know why or how that quite works yet. But selenium pollution is on the rise with its uses in agriculture and also being a byproduct of mining. Like there's been numerous spills in the recent past that have really screwed up ecosystems. Bellews Lake in North Carolina is a reservoir that was created for the purpose of pumping cold water to and from a coal burning power plant. In a power plant, not all coal will burn up completely in the process of turning it into electricity. So all the coal ash that accumulates, they dump into these ponds and reservoirs. In Appalachia, you'll hear sometimes they call these things coal slurries. Well, selenium pollution came out of the coal ash through 11 years of dumping in Bellews Reservoir. There used to be 20 different species of fish in that reservoir. They were down to one after 11 years. The selenium resistant mosquito fish, only one that remains. Scary sounding fish, but it's actually tiny. It's like the size of your finger. But yeah, selenium messes with fish's reproduction and it's pretty long lasting. They stopped the coal ash dumping in 1986 and selenium toxicity like still remains a problem to this day. Well, on that lovely note about all the fish dying, Let's make some zucchini bread. So I'm gonna combine three eggs, two cups of sugar, three cups of flour, one cup vegetable oil, two cups of unpeeled ground zucchini, two teaspoons of vanilla, a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of baking powder to help it rise, one cup of chopped Brazil nuts, and one cup of drained crushed pineapple. Mix that all together, pour into your molds, and bake at 350 for about an hour. Selenium was discovered in Sweden in 1817 by Jans Jacob Berzelius. Berzelius was a wonderful chemist. He's famous for discovering selenium and cerium, and he was the first to isolate silicon and thorium. Discovering selenium came from a sulfuric acid plant that he owned, and it helped him a lot in his career, actually. So on the 23rd of September in 1817, Berzelius wrote a letter to the great German chemist Klaproth, saying he had discovered some tellurium in some minerals in his sulfuric acid plant. Tellurium had been named by Klaproth years earlier. Klaproth wrote back to him saying, you know, that's a weird discovery because those minerals you have are not supposed to have tellurium in it. So Berzelius kept on researching and the next year he wrote back to Klaproth saying he was wrong. It was not tellurium, but a new element. The reason for the mix up was that when you burn selenium, it smells like radishes, which is exactly how tellurium smells when you do the same thing. But you know, it totally makes sense for the mix up. I mean, it was 1817. They were basing the discovery of 
of elements on burning it and seeing what it smelled like. It's kind of amazing they were able to figure all this out with the equipment they had in the first place, you know, burning and smelling stuff. Plus, selenium is smack in between sulfur and tellurium in row 16 of the periodic table, and therefore has some similar chemical properties. Fertilius would name his new element selenium after the Greek word for moon, as tellurium was named after the Greek word for earth. I think the first time I really ever heard of selenium was from the 2001 movie Evolution. It had a bunch of really famous actors in it, David Duchovny, Orlando Jones, Sean William Scott, Julianne Moore, Dan Aykroyd had a part. It was directed by Ivan Reitman, you know, who did Ghostbusters and had like a little bit of a Ghostbusters feeling to it. Spoilers ahead, by the way. So the movie was, was pretty funny. It was about aliens coming to earth on a meteorite and rapidly evolving from like bacteria to flatworms to apes in like a matter of days. Not the most scientifically accurate movie out there, but probably still more scientifically accurate than ancient aliens. Anyway, this alien blob is growing so much, it's gonna take over the United States and eventually the world. But they figure out that the aliens are not carbon-based, they're nitrogen-based. And David Duchovny, while looking at Julianne Moore's t-shirt that has the periodic table on it, realizes that if you go two elements down and one to the right, you get arsenic, poison to carbon-based life forms. Well, if you do the same thing, down two over one, you get selenium. So a couple of the previously dumbest characters in the movie, one played by Ethan Supley, declare they know how to get a lot of selenium. Head and shoulders. The dandruff shampoo? Yeah, that's the stuff. The active ingredient is selenium sulfide. How, how do you know that? You don't know anything. Haven't you noticed how shiny and flake-free our hair is? So they fill a fire truck full of dandruff shampoo and kill the aliens and Hilarity ensues. God, saying that out loud makes the movie sound even more ridiculous, but that is what happened. Oh yeah, they shot the fire hose up the alien's anus, too. Forgot to mention that. And Orlando Jones got stuck up in there. It's a whole thing. But then the movie ends with them all doing a head and shoulders commercial. Like, the entire movie was just building to a cheesy dandruff shampoo commercial. But, oh well, yeah. Got some good laughs out of it. And yes, selenium sulfide is in head and shoulders. It's antifungal agent, helps with dandruff, and a bunch of other stuff. So there you have it, selenium, good for dandruff, bad for fish ecosystems. Nice topic to discuss over breakfast. That's good. Thanks, see you next time. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button, because um, just please do it just for me.